Hey everyone, and thanks for watching today's episode. Before we start, I want to thank today's sponsor, the new mobile game, Contra Returns. That's right, Contra. Contra is bringing its epic action experience to mobile gamers around the world in a free-to-play format. Soon to be available on iOS and Android devices, you'll get to play over 200 levels in the run-and-gun single-player experience we all know and love, while also offering real-time head-to-head 1v1 or 3v3 multiplayer modes, so you have a variety of options to choose how you play. You'll also get to choose from more than 10 different heroes with customizable options of skills, skins, and weapons to cater to any kind of playstyle you may want to go with. So, to pre-register for Contra Returns and to receive a free tattooed lance skin and in-game diamond currency when the game launches on July 26th, click the link in the box down below. Doing so helps support the show. Once again, a big thank you to Contra Returns for sponsoring today's video. Now, on with the show. Six years ago, there was a knock at the office door. Not an ordinary knock, no. There was something cool about it. Refreshing, even. What's on the other side of this door, I thought. Was it the original recording of John Coltrane's Equinox? No. Cooler than that. Was it Arthur Fonzarelli starting a jukebox with his fist? Even cooler. Was it Matthew McConaughey driving a Lincoln before he was paid to drive a Lincoln? Not even close. This knock, accompanied by fresh hints of lemon and lime, was from the one, the only, the Uncola itself. And that was the only good thing to come from completing Cool Spot. And the battle continues! Yes. This could turn it all around! This bout will determine who is the strongest once and for all! Hey everyone, and welcome back to another episode of the Completionist New Game Plus, the show where I am re-completing the first 120 games I ever completed here on my channel. Cool Spot is an unremarkable game that, for me, managed to be unforgettable for two reasons. The first being that completing the game led to one of the most fascinating visits I've ever experienced here at TOVG headquarters. Since it occurred after my original Cool Spot episode aired, hardly any of you know about it. And what better way to talk about that experience than right here on The Completionist New Game Plus. But, before I go any further into the next reason, I should probably digress by answering a question that's on many of your minds. What the f*** is a Cool Spot? So back in the late 80s and early 90s, we got this surge in licensed games, right? Big companies all around the world were catching wise to the money being made in video games, and they wanted a piece of it. Now with every Disney movie came a Disney game. Now kids had a choice to play with their favorite Power Rangers or play as their favorite Power Rangers. If you made a product in this era that kids liked, it was probably turned into a video game. Junk food companies were no different. McDonald's game, Domino's game, Cheetos game, and not wanting to be the odd one out, 7-Up partnered with Virgin Mastertronic in 1990 to make, you guessed it, a 7-Up game. Spot the video game was basically the board game Othello, but featured the 7-Up mascot, Spot. Yeah, if you weren't aware, that red dot on your 7-Up bottle used to sprout arms and legs and shades and was given the spotlight in all of the 7-Up commercials back in the day. Well, in the US at least. The UK got this Fido Dido wanker instead. Anyway, the 7-Up commercials often featured numerous spots changing a cola soft drink into 7-Up as part of them branding themselves as the Uncola. I couldn't help but find it a little sad that the whole premise of these commercials was try our soda when you get tired of this other better soda. Anyways, 7-Up started calling Spot Cool Spot because apparently in order to convince people your mascot was cool, all you had to do was add the word cool to its name. Meanwhile, Virgin Mastertronic underwent some changes and became Cool Virgin Mastertronic. No, just kidding. They became Virgin Interactive. Interactive. They partnered up once again with 7up to put the mascot back in a video game. Thus, the game Cool Spot was born. This time, it leaned more heavily on the whole soda thing and was released on like every system available at the time. Most considered the Sega Genesis version to be the best. So this time around, I'm checking out the Super Nintendo version. Cool Spot is a basic 2D platform with an emphasis on collection. You can move left, you can move right, jump and shoot bursts of bubbles in any direction to defeat enemies. Health is indicated in a Doom slash Wolfenstein manner with the picture of Cool Spot that becomes warped like a peeling sticker as you take 
damage. Beating a level happens when you collect a certain percentage of scattered red dots and shoot the lock off of a fellow Cool Spot's cage to free them. As for plot, well, this was a point of contention for me the first time playing Cool Spot. If one were to just pick up the game and play, the story they would extrapolate would be Cool Spot goes to random locations and frees fellow Cool Spots from cages. However, the game manual provides much more background. <clears throat> For years, Wild Wicked Wily Will has been trying to capture a real life spot. He left traps in all the fun places, and to explain the time limit in each level, it says, Will will be back to take them into captivity forever. You also learn that the cool spot you play as wasn't captured because it was out surfing at the time, which I guess explains this weird opening scene. All right, while the game manual was a great opportunity to provide a little background of what's going on, it originally baffled me that the entirety of the plot exists in the manual and none of it is in the game. That hasn't changed once again, I am still baffled. Ever since I first played it, I've had to imagine Wicked Will looking like mustachioed Ted with a bowler hat because guess what? You never see him in this game. He's never even mentioned once on the text in the screen anywhere. This whole time, he's trying to prove that Cool Spot exists, and here I am trying to prove that he exists. Weird choice, Virgin Interactive, if that's your freaking name anymore. Oh yeah, they're gone. Yeah, they're gone. Never mind. Whatever your name is. So by now, you probably have a sense of how I originally felt about this game, which brings me to the other reason why Cool Spot stands out for me. If you've seen the show before, you know that I end with a rating that's based less on whether a game is good or bad, and more on how much of a game is worth playing. Sure, a completed rating generally implies a game is good, but it may receive that rating because there's not much to complete, or because completion is only a baby step away from finishing the game. Similarly, I've given some of my favorite games a finish it rating because as fun as they are they may be overloaded with completion criteria to the point that the fun plays off after beating them even a play it rating doesn't imply that a game is bad it may not be worth making it to the credits but maybe those first few hours of gameplay are really fun but when a game gets my seldom used rating of donate it that's when it's safe to say that i find a game to truly be bad cool spot was the first game on my channel to ever receive a donate it rating after the fact that I changed it from burn it to donate it. I didn't like it. Despite the countless fans who claim that Cool Spot is one of the few exceptions to the notion that licensed games are bad, I thought this licensed game was bad. Graphics were decent, controls were fine, music was okay, but none of these things excelled enough to compensate for what I felt was a pointless product placed adventure. So with that in mind, if my recent playthrough was ever going to give me a new outlook on this game, Cool Spot had a gigantic mountain to climb. Cool Spot isn't particularly challenging, even on its hardest difficulty, nor is it a total breeze to get through by any means. Whether it was the subconscious memories of my first playthrough warning me of hidden dangers, or merely my affinity for 2D platformers, I was able to make it through the game with only minimal deaths. That being said, the challenges game presented managed to take center stage for me on this playthrough. In most cases, a game's difficulty being not too easy and not too difficult would make it just about right, right? It's not exactly the case with Cool Spot when you consider the type of challenge the game presents. The type of challenge presented in Cool Spot is more of a FU slash bullshit variety. Now allow me to explain. Cool Spot relies heavily on hidden information in order to make the game challenging. First off, there are multiple moments where a couple of red dots are just a short jump away. You leap and collect the trail of dots, but as you can't see the ground from your current height, you don't realize that you're falling directly onto an enemy or a patch of barbed wire. These were really the only moments where I take damage as I normally would be able to pick off enemies and avoid traps when I could, you know, see them. And before you tell me, oh, Gerard, just hold down the D button to make the camera go lower. Well, sometimes that wasn't enough, you punk. This type of trial and error difficulty isn't egregious, but when compounded with other examples of hidden information, it gets very annoying. In a similar vein of not being able to see certain dangers until it's too late, the game sometimes requires you to jump from your current platform into another one that you can't even see. This was particularly frustrating in levels like Waiting Around and Locomotive, which required multiple leaps of faith. Side note, the moving background in Locomotive made me nauseous the first time I played it, and lucky me, I get to relive that nausea. I wouldn't know if a 
jump was on the target until I've already made the jump. If I botched it, then I either had to drop to the bottom of the level and have to grind my way back up, or in the case of waiting around, I'd fall into the water and just die immediately. Okay, so let me get this straight. Cool Spot can surf giant waves into the ocean, but when he falls into a tub of still water, he just dies. I am fortunate to have the patience, the skill, and the memory to deal with these blind jumps. But for others, I can easily see them for being grounds for a rage quit. And that brings me to the numerous red dots scattered throughout each level. This is the main factor that separates finishing versus completing cool spot. Collecting dots ups your cool percentage and is required for a couple of things. First off, you need to collect 90% on hard mode to be cool enough to shoot the lock and free the caged cool spot from each level. Also, when playing a level on hard mode, you must collect 100% of the dots to unlock a bonus stage. Bonus stages take place within a giant 7-up bottle and provide an opportunity to collect more points, more lives, and one of the six letters that spell the word Uncola. The six letters each serve as a continue, but for completion purposes, all must be collected and none will be used. Isn't that great? So if you're going for that full completion bonus, and let's face it, we are, that means collecting six letters by unlocking all all six bonus stages by becoming 100% cool in at least six levels by collecting all the red dots in six levels. But you know, since I am the completionist, I'm going for 100% cool in every level because I'm a crazy person. You know that by now, right? After 90 plus episodes and 400 regular episodes, you know I'm crazy, right? Right? Yes, yes. We're See? Crazy. See, I'm crazy. Even the people I pay tell me I'm crazy. Don't listen to Frazier. Gerard is crazy. I'm crazy. Crazy. My point is, those red dots are f***ing important. I can't consider the game complete without them. If you plan on playing the game on easy or normal mode, you can afford to skip a bunch of them. But completing the game on hard mode like I had to meant that I didn't have that luxury. And that brings me back to the bull challenge of hidden information. Many of these red dots are plainly visible and are easily obtained. Some, however, are very, very, very well hidden. Cool Spot can move behind certain objects, which at first may seem like a neat way of breaking the visual 2D monotony until you discover how many of these damn dots are oh so cleverly placed behind a lot of these foreground items. The two levels that take place within a wall have the majority of their dots hidden behind the network of pipes that run throughout the levels. Even with vigilant exploration, sometimes I'd miss one of these little shits and would then have to retrace my steps throughout the entire level, jumping behind random random pipes and toys and bullshit just hoping to hear that the dot collecting sound effect goes off. It's like the sound of opening a flat 7-up. You get excited and then you realize it's flat. Who the fuck drinks flat 7-up? Is that, is that something we did you, did you drink? Do you drink flat 7-up? I don't, I don't that's what I thought. That's what I fucking thought. No one drinks flat 7-Up, you goddamn monsters. And those levels were just the biggest perpetrators. Every level had hidden dots. And at first, I didn't know how I could move behind certain things like the floating planes and the blimps. No, it wasn't particularly hard to tediously retrace my steps and jump behind everything. But does that sound like fun to you? There's a level of challenge to this game. It's just not that kind of enjoyable. There's not much good I can say about this game other than it didn't take long to complete. However, I mentioned that Cool Spot has a special bonus for beating it on hard and collecting the six Uncola bonus stage letters. If you beat the game on any other difficulty, use any of the letters as a continue, or fail to collect any of the letters at all, then you'll get this screen of Cool Spot crying because you didn't meet the requirements for entering a contest. When I originally met the necessary criteria, I got this congratulatory screen that tells you to take a picture of the screen and send it to the address for Virgin Games printed in the game manual. At this point, most people probably expected me to move on with my life. After all, contest participants probably only received some cheap little cereal box trinket. And uh, here's another key point. The contest ended in December 31st of 1993. And let me be clear here, I did not enjoy this game, but I didn't come all this way to just stop. So you know what I did. I took a picture of this screen, just like the game told me to. And as Virgin Interactive had long been divided up and absorbed into other companies, I did the next best thing I could. I tweeted it at 7up's Twitter, and then some of you saw it and tweeted at 7up, and it became this awesome inside joke that we all shared, and that was where my original Cool Spot episode ended. Now you get to hear the rest of the story. Sadly, any video of this occasion was lost, but once again, we're doing the next best thing. I am going to offer you right now a reenactment that was pretty accurate on how it all went down. 
So after my episode aired, I had tweeted out my original completion screen, and a lot of you guys went ahead and retweeted it and replied. Because you did so, 7up DM'd me on Twitter and asked for my address slash said they were sending me something. It was pretty discreet and weird, but I said, you know what? Why not? A week later, these two, what I can only describe as 7up women, showed up at our office door. And with them, they brought a pallet of 7up. 7up, Diet 7up, and Red 7up. Because 7up is owned by one of those big corporations that owns multiple sodas, we also got Sunkissed and Snapple. And not only that, but we got like glasses and speakers and shit. It was super weird. What was even weirder is the photo I took with the girls. It just felt like super bizarre. Bizarre. They had no idea why they were there. I didn't know why they were there. It was an overall weird experience, to say the least. But hey, we drank all of the uncool soda until it was gone. Yeah, that happened. Not only was this story something I wanted to share with you all, but I felt it necessary to bring it up as a part of my personal overall cool spot experience. So, let's break this sucker down, shall we? In my journey of re-completing Cool Spot, there were three and a half hours of total playtime. I'm glad it was super short, but what a lame way to spend an afternoon. About six, maybe seven deaths, a couple from enemies and hazards, and about five from falling into water. Eleven Cool Spots freed from the clutches of Will, who we never see. All six Uncola letters collected by unlocking all six bonus stages. 100% cool in every level and bonus stage. I collected all the red dots, and it's official, I am now Cool Completionist. And 110. There's 110 calories in a thirst-quenching 8-ounce bottle of, you guessed it, DNL. So what does all this mean as far as the original rating goes? Well, here's what I'll say. If you have a strong following on social media, or have a popular YouTube channel, and you're really into Snapple products and soda, Completing Cool Spot may provide you with a pretty ridiculous experience. If that's the case, go for it. Complete away, my friends. But now that I've had that experience, I can put that game behind me and reflect on the heaping cash grab of mediocrity that this game is. So, with that in mind, guys, I still give this game my completionist rating of Donate It. And remember, folks, the people in the social media account that are running for that corporate company are probably an intern a really overworked, underpaid person. So remember to just be kind. Donate it! <laughs>